So we've been talking about high ticket offers for the last few episodes of the podcast. And if you're listening to this, you might be thinking to yourself, what could I possibly do that people would pay me a high ticket price point for? What expertise do I have? Or even who am I to be charging this amount of money for my services. Well, in this episode, we are going to talk through how you can figure out what unique expertise or skill set you have that you can translate into a high ticket offer that clients will love to pay you for because you are going to have such an amazing impact on their lives. This is the Profit and Prosper podcast, the podcast where I'll teach you how to take home a six figure paycheck from your business without having to sacrifice your life today. At this point, when I've got a client who is on board with the idea of going high ticket, basically every single time we work through it, they start asking themselves this question. They start having this mindset issue pop up where they start doubting their ability to receive a high ticket price point from clients. This mindset has so many different facets to it. There's no way I can cover it all in one episode, but a lot of it has to do with your own perception of your worth. And I don't mean your self-worth. You've probably heard me say this multiple times on the podcast before, but it really drives me nuts when I hear people say, charge your worth. This is not about charging your worth because what you charge as a price point in your business is in no way reflective of your self-worth. There are people out there who can charge $7 for a course, but that doesn't mean their self-worth is $7, right? Like your self-worth as a human being is in no way tied to the price point in your business. But what I am on board with is charging for the value that you provide to your clients. What we really want is an energetic exchange, right? And this has happened to me a lot, but I find that when I start to feel more run down, when I start to feel stressed out and burned out, I can usually go somewhere in my business or my life and find a relationship or find something that I'm spending my time on that is not actually energetically equal. Like I'm putting a lot more into it than I'm getting back. So it's the same with having a high ticket offer. I see a lot of women who are over delivering. I've done it before, providing a really great service and yet discounting themselves not charging for it, feeling a lot of guilt around charging more for it. There's just so many emotions that come up and that might be okay in the short term. You might be able to make it work, but I'm going to tell you long term, you are going to start resenting your clients. You're going to start feeling burned out. You're going to start resenting your team. You're going to want to burn your business to the ground. And so what we want to do is create a high ticket offer and charge for it accordingly. And it really starts with identifying where in your experience or in your skill set, whether it's in your business or in your experience before you started your business, what do you have that you bring to the table that a client is going to happily pay you a premium for? I'm going to talk you through some of the questions that I ask my clients in the High Profit Society when we are creating offers for them. But before we do that, I do want to take a minute and talk about the difference in a strategy deliverable versus a tactical administrative deliverable. The reason I bring that up is you can have high ticket offers for both. You can have a high ticket strategic offer where you don't have as many deliverables and the offer really is delivered through your time, your fairy dusting, right? You show up on a call with your client or, you know, you work with them in Voxer or wherever, but you just use your brain to very quickly sort of get them a result. It's like that meme or whatever that says like the electrician comes out and like, puts the plug in to this one outlet in the wall and the bill is like a thousand dollars and somebody's like, but this only, all you had to do was put the plug into the wall. Like, why didn't you charge me this much? And he's like, it's a dollar for me putting the plug into the wall, but it's $999 for me knowing where to put the plug, (laughs) right? It's the same for you. I think that when we have the experiences that we have, you become accustomed to it. I've been reading the Diary of a CEO book and he has all of these sort of laws for how to make your life better. And one that I just read recently, this actually just popped into my head. You can look at sort of the psychology of the human brain and like your brain literally to conserve energy, we start to ignore the things that are repeated. We start to not see things like you don't see the clutter in your house as much anymore because you just start to ignore it. Or like as another example, When we moved into our house, we have planes coming over our head because there's like a flight pattern for planes coming in and landing. And I was so mad when we first moved in because I didn't know that we were going to have airplane noise. But then after about a month, I didn't hear it anymore. I don't hear the planes anymore. And it's the same with your expertise. 
your brain will literally stop recognizing that you do something. You take it for granted. And I think we forget when we have the experience that we have that not everybody has that experience. Something that is ho-hum to you, something that's really easy and fast and simple to you is not easy and fast and simple to somebody else. It is mind-blowing to someone else. And so I think when you forget that, it can be easy to undercharge. It can be easy to discount the expertise that you do have. Back to my original point in differentiating between a strategic high-ticket offer and a deliverables high-ticket offer. You can have a high-ticket offer that is based on a higher level of deliverables. Some examples. Bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is not strategic. Bookkeeping is administrative and tactical, but you could do bookkeeping for a multi seven figure business that you charge $5,000 or more a month for because the volume is so high. That is still a high ticket offer. You could also, on the other hand, have a strategic component to that offer where you don't do any bookkeeping, but you do provide the overall financial strategy and still charge $5,000 a month, right? So I think as we're stepping back and thinking about your expertise, keep in mind that what you provide, the skill set that you have might lend itself to maybe you want to go the deliverables route. That does typically involve more team because you're going to want to outsource that actually the day-to-day work so that you're not tied up in all of it versus a strategic offer. You can typically go with a less team and it's more about your brain and your expertise until you find other team members who have a similar skill set, right? Keeping that in mind, the questions that I want you to start asking yourself, and I actually really love to go to chat GPT for things like this because not that it has all the answers, but it really just helps me brainstorm. What you can start asking yourself is number one, what experiences have you had? How have you helped other people or what life experiences have you personally gone through that other people are experiencing that you can walk them through? So as an example, I'm going to be teaching you how to implement a high ticket offer in your business because I have done that in my own business. Or as another example, I got divorced. I'm not saying I'm a going to go create a relationship offer, right? (laughs) But I have been through that experience of getting divorced and going back out into the world, right? And so there's a world where I could coach other women through that. Again, not saying I'm going to, but I could. Think through the life experiences that you have. I think that this is one where a lot of people will have imposter syndrome. I absolutely did. When I first left my corporate job to go full time in my accounting agency and then we implemented a CFO offer, I struggled for at least a year with calling myself a CFO because in my experience, CFOs were old white men. They were the people who were very high up in the C-suite at these big companies. And I was like, there's just no world where I am that. And then what I finally realized was I don't have to be that to be a CFO. I don't have to be that to provide a really amazing transformation for my clients. Just because you have imposter syndrome doesn't mean that you're not good enough or qualified enough to provide the service or the transformation that you want to provide. I think the only time when I would shy away from it is when you literally haven't done it before. So for example, when we think about the faceless marketing and the other MRR whatever it is, master resale rights, right? These are people who are selling courses about how to grow a business when they've not ever grown a business before. Those are the types of things where I feel like it is misaligned to be putting yourself out there as an expert or someone who can guide other people through doing something that you have never done. However, I do have thoughts about if you want to get into something that you've never done before, what I would do is say, hey, go out and find people who want what you want to provide and start doing it for free. Do a couple for free and say, listen, I'm just trying to build on my expertise. I'm trying to learn this. Would you be open to me testing out or helping you through ABC and get a few reps under your belt before you start putting yourself out there as an expert in that area? Because I'm not trying to tell anybody that they're not good enough good enough, or whatever it is to deliver an offer, but I do want us to come from an aligned place where we are being integral. Like what's the, <laughs> I want to be a person of integrity. And I know that you do too, because if you're listening to me, I know you do. So being in integrity is still different than having imposter syndrome. And so I just want you to be aware of that and say, like, when have you used 
your expertise? When have you guided someone through an ex- a transformation? When have you had a big impact on someone else? Or when have you personally gone through something big that you've had to work through? And those are the things that we want to draw on. Okay, so back to ChatGBT. <laughs> so ChatGBT can't tell you all of that. But what I do find helpful is if you go into ChatGPT, say, hey, this is what my expertise is in. These are the things I'm really good at. These are the things that I've done. These are the types of clients that I want to work with. And then you start asking ChatGPT, what are my clients' core values? What are the things that they care the most about? What are the problems that they're facing when it comes to this area? What are the problems that they're facing when it comes to their marriage failing? What problems are they facing when it comes to implementing a high ticket offer in their business? And the answer is yes, I did actually go through a ChatGPT and ask it all these questions as I was creating all of my content around high ticket offers because it is such a good tool for helping you brainstorm. But the point of doing this is I want you to sit down and start thinking about what do your clients ultimately value and what types of problems do they have that if they solved those problems, it would have a huge impact on their lives. One of the things that comes to my mind is hiring a VA. And I know some of you listening to this are VAs. You can go hire a freelancer VA who will charge you by the hour and they do administrative type work. But what if you are a VA and you want to implement a high ticket offer? How do you transition from charging $25 an hour to say, hey, I'm going to build in a retainer of a thousand bucks a month, right? That's not solely based on hours. Because I think a lot of people will go the package route and say, okay, my package starts at $1,000 a month, but it's still based on hours. So what is it? $25 an hour. If you have $1,000 a month, how many hours is that? 40 hours. It would help if I could do math. So you do the math around the package, you charge $1,000 a month, but if you just do it based on hours, right? $25 an hour, means you're going to work 40 hours. You're still stuck in that trap of trading time for money. What you can start asking yourself is saying, okay, what area do I want to focus on with my services. Let's say you do marketing. Maybe you help your clients with marketing and you're a marketing type VA. Go in and start asking, okay, what are the problems that they're facing when it comes to marketing? What are the problems that I can help them resolve that go beyond just the deliverables and start asking, how can I guide them through the strategy. And as I'm talking about this, I just had this conversation with a client of mine where she has a social media manager that she's been paying. And she's like, help me figure out if this is even worth my money to keep paying anymore. Because the social media manager, she posts beautiful graphics. She posts consistently, but there's no strategy behind it. And so she's not sure if she's getting the value out of paying for the deliverables of posting a certain number of reels and posts and stories every week because there's no big picture overarching strategy. So if I'm that social media manager, what I'm going to start doing is saying, hey, I'm going to start charging you way more money every month, right? And I'm going to help you map out, okay, what is the social media strategy? What are we trying to do on Instagram? Where do we want our clients to go after they come to our page? What types of content is working the best to bring people in to attract new leads into our business? That's the difference between hourly deliverables, like very tactical, administrative, lower ticket offer and a high ticket strategic offer. And this is exactly what that social media manager is probably discounting in her mind because she doesn't even realize how easy it is for her to do that strategy. She's not realizing that this would be incredibly impactful to her clients. So in summary, if you want to create a high ticket offer in your business and you're wondering what exactly can I do to charge a higher ticket price. What I want you to ask yourself is thinking about the area that you want to help your clients, the industry or niche that you're in, what type of clients you're working with. I want you to be thinking about what problems do they have and what values and goals do they have and how can you help them connect the two? How can you use your expertise and your skill set to help them go from the problems that they have, the current situation that they're in, into where they want to go? Even if you're just taking them one step along the way, that is still having a massive transformation on them. Going back to understanding the difference between the type of offer that you want between having a very heavy deliverables-based type of offer or a strategic type of offer, both are totally fine. They're just 
just different and they might be, you know, better suited to different types of businesses. It's really just up to you and the type of business you want to grow and what feels most aligned for the way that you want to show up and work. So if you want to dive deeper into creating a high ticket offer for your business, come and join my free three day CEO shift mini course, where I'm going to be walking you through step-by-step how to create and implement a high ticket offer in your business. Specifically in day two, we are going to start addressing the mindset issues that are going to come up for you as you think about who's going to charge me or who's going to pay this much for my offers. Who am I to charge this much and carrying it through to how to structure an offer that helps you to scale a lean and profitable business. Cause I'm going to be diving more into not just the offer, but also the team and the systems that you need in order to scale that up. So you can sign up for the mini course is sign up at sarahhyoung.com forward slash CEO shift. I hope you enjoyed this episode y'all and I'll see you back for the next one.